Amen. Greetings um, to Joy Community Church. Um, it's an honor and a privilege to be with you today. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Stuart Patico, for that introduction. We do go back way, way back. And uh, I was there when the church was launched, so a privilege and honor to be there at that time. And I know that he is a man of God. His beautiful wife, Andrea, um, is known my wife for even longer than I have known Pastor Stuart, and she is a wonderful woman of God. Uh, this morning, I, I just want to have a quick introduction and then we will go straight into the word. But um, we are in a pivotal season in history. And um, this pandemic has highlighted to many of us the signs of the times. Uh, and we've seen the Bible come alive with the prophecies. For many, it's been a, a time of reflection. For me, it has reinforced that nothing else really matters than knowing Jesus. Uh, and has forced me to wake up and, and to make sure uh, my election and calling is certain because I want to make it into heaven. Can I encourage the church? And I know it's a church that is based on the word of God because of your pastor. Um, just to stay in the word, stay in prayer, stay in a period of worship. Uh, seek the Lord's face whilst he may be found. Uh, it's been an unprecedented time for me personally, maybe for many others in unprecedented deaths, COVID-19 related and, and other deaths. Uh, so I've had to reevaluate my standing with God. And, and, and a prayer that came to me as I was meditating is that just to be close to you, Lord, is my desire. Despite all the messages I've preached on subjects like faith, signs and wonders, purpose, destiny, spiritual warfare, the Holy Spirit power, the anointing, the one thing that has been on my heart and in my spirit over these past few weeks is the love of God. The first message I ever preached that my, my church was based on love and, and today I want to come with the topic, uh, you say you love me but um, I'm from a Pentecostal background, so I can get fired up. But, but today I want to take my time and just uh, minister to you uh, the word as the Lord has placed in my heart. Uh, and I want you to also to focus on God's love manifested through the incarnation. I'm going to read from First uh, John chapter 4, verses 7 to 11, and you will have it up on your screen, uh, because it sums up the... Uh, love of God very, very well. It reads thus, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God had sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation, that is the atoning sacrifice, the NIV version says, for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And I wanna break down this message into three parts, three aspects. Firstly, brotherly love, that's the filial love of God. Secondly, the Father's love, the agape love, which we probably all know. And then thirdly, Jesus' sacrificial love. If I were to sum up the Bible, its context, its message, it would simply be God's love or Jesus saves. Either one is just two words. That's the simple gospel, gospel message. We could sum it up in one word, the whole Bible, love or agape. For all the theological studies and doctrines that we have undertaken and studied and discussed, disagreed, um, the matter is just that God loves you. Jesus saves. And this message is out on Facebook is to let you know that Jesus saves. This world needs the message of God's love in order to overcome the world's problems. It is a it's not a complicated message. We are the ones who have complicated the, the, the message, the simple gospel message. The Apostle John wrote in 1st, 2nd and 3rd John to address many false teachings that had rose up in the early church. 
Gnosticism was one that claimed that the spirit was completely good, but matter completely evil, and concluded that if God was truly good, he could not have created the material universe, and therefore a lesser God created it. We therefore have a problem with this heretical teaching. The God of the Old Testament, they were saying, was a lesser God than the New Testament. This dualistic view concluded that Jesus did not have a physical body. This teaching is also called docetism, which claimed that Jesus only appeared to have a physical body, but did not suffer the pain and death on the cross. You could see how that can be a problem for us because Jesus went to the cross that you and I might be saved. The Apostle John therefore addressed this, these heretical teachings and dealt with it through the primary teachings of love and the incarnation. Gordon Fee wrote in the book, How to Read the Bible, book by book, the obvious ties between these two themes, that is love and incarnation, is that God's love for us, which we in turn are to have for one another, is fully revealed in the incarnation when the Son of God died for us. It is the ultimate expression of God's love for us. The author wrote these letters, as you know, is the same author, the Apostle John, who wrote the book of John. Uh, and we see that he wrote it from a different perspective to the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John sought to demonstrate that Jesus is the Son of God, whereby God himself comes to the world through the incarnation. And this is captured in John 1, which we all know. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. God and the word was God. He was in the beginning. All things were made by him and without him was nothing made that was made. And the word became flesh and we beheld his glory. The word became flesh and we didn't really know or understand who this man Jesus was. We don't have time to go through the whole book of John, but suffice it to say that in his incarnation, in his incarnation, in through this crucifixion, Jesus revealed God's love and redeemed humanity to himself. It's that revelation that had me declaring my love for Jesus. Those of you who have experienced Jesus' saving grace would know that feeling and would lead you into an expression to say, Lord, I love you. If you haven't said that this morning, just say it right now. Lord, I love you. Father, I adore you. When you have that agape love in you, it leads you to express your love for God and leads you into a place of blissful worship. Let me touch on the first aspect, brotherly love. This is so important. As we look at the first part of the scripture reading, Brethren, let us love one another. I have told my church, you can't stop me loving you. Hallelujah. Anybody who comes up against you and shows you hate or malice or any kind of uh, conflict, just turn around and say, you can't stop me loving you. There's nothing, absolutely nothing you can do about that because the word of God declares that we are to love one another. This is one of the commandments that Jesus gave us. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And in those commandments, there are several things that he teaches us of how we are to relate to one another. In this season, the world needs to see the love of God because we have a, a time where the enemy has come in and, and corrupted the world, corrupted uh, our thinking, corrupted even the definition of what love means. God forbid. Tell your neighbor, you can't stop this love. The teachings of Jesus and his actions were so revolutionary during his time that people often marveled and were astonished at his doctrine. I do love your pastor, uh, Stuart, because when he teaches, he, he captivates his audience. He, he teaches as one with authority. In Matthew 5, to seven, uh, Jesus taught on a variety of topics. And when he had finished, the people were astonished at his teaching. He taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Others would have said that what manner of man is this? Or come see a man 
could this be the Christ? John himself in John 7 noted a time when Jesus goes into the temple and teaches and the Jews marvel saying, how does this man know letters having never studied? Well, I can tell you this, it's because he is God. He is God incarnate, that because of his love, he left glory, came down in order that you and I could identify with him. A certain lawyer asked a question at one point, Lord, what is the great commandment in the law? And it doesn't matter what doctrines we teach, the whole law is based on love. Jesus answered him, he says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hangs all the law and the prophets. The whole Bible is based on those two commandments. Jesus gives a twist to that and says, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. That commandment is different in that we were commanded before to love our neighbor as ourselves. But Jesus steps, the, puts the bar even higher and says, as I have loved you unconditionally, sacrificially, no matter what they do, no matter who rejects you, who hates you, who says all manner of things against you, you have got to love your neighbor. This week I was dealing with someone and, and, and we're talking about forgiveness and I see love and forgiveness as two sides of a coin. When we uh, uh, know the Our Father prayer, it says, forgive, Lord, forgive me my trespasses as I have, as, as you have forgiven us. And, and the, the Jesus teaches, he says, look, if you do not forgive, neither will your Father forgive you. There are some times and some situations we have got to let it go. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be murder. It could be violence against you. It could be words that have been expressed against you. Let it go. The love of God commands us to forgive and to let it go. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, and this, one of the most difficult scriptures to address is Matthew 5, 44 to 48. Jesus says, I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Wow, that is something that is very difficult to do. But I want you to know that through the power of the Holy Ghost, you are able to live that scripture. For it concludes that we must be perfect as our Father is perfect in heaven. It is a continual process where the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. That's after going through tribulation. That's after you've had hope. That's after you've had patience. That's after you've had experience. It says the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. No matter what people say to you, and some of our Adamic nature comes out, the carnal nature, the works of the flesh, the flesh and the spirit wars against each other, and the enemy will find and try and look for any small gap, any weakness in order to try and get you not to love, get you to flare up. But Jesus says, I command you to love. I had an experience once with a family member who, who I felt had wronged me and, and I went through a period where they wouldn't speak. They said all manner of things and wouldn't speak to me for two years. And I kept praying, Lord, change them, touch them. But you know, one day the Lord said, let it go. He said, I want you to release that person. And that scripture became a reality to me, Matthew 5, 44 to 48. Immediately that I let go, there was a burden that was lifted up. And we know in the scripture, the Lord says, my yoke is easy and my burdens light. There was a yoke that was lifted up. And with what, within one week, there was reconciliation. It was not possible for me of my own self to get reconciliation. But as soon as I obeyed the Holy Spirit, he reconciled that relationship. Hallelujah. I, I, I was able to praise God and say to the enemy, you are defeated. There is too many people that have unforgiveness in their hearts that leads 
to bitterness that leads to hate and we need to let it go the first murder that occurred in the bible we see from cain and abel uh, uh, that cain was very angry this is his own brother his own flesh and blood uh, and G and the lord spoke he sees god sees everything that you and i go through he says why are you angry god always gives us an opportunity to turn things around he says why is your countenance fallen if you do well your offering will be accepted and if you don't then sin lies at the door. We need to say no to the sin. We need to say to the devil to resist the devil and he will flee. Don't get me wrong. When Jesus went through the, the, the temptation in the wilderness, he tempted Jesus. But the Bible says that he waited for an opportune moment. This is after Jesus was endured with power, after he rejected him, after he said, it is written. He came and he waited. This, this, the Bible says he waited for an opportune moment when he could come back to tempt Jesus and he will wait for an opportune moment to tempt you and Cain takes Abel and they have a conversation and because of that anger and hate rage fills up and we hear the teaching of Jesus that murder is committed in your heart even before the action and he kills Abel we have this in our society multiplied by millions and millions of times, we see the enemy wreaking havoc. But I want you to know what the Bible says in Corinthians. We have a definition of love in 1 Corinthians 13. And listen to it very carefully. Love suffers long and is kind. So it doesn't matter the ill will that you may have or that someone has towards you. You have got to be patient. Love does not envy. It's not puffed up, does not parade itself, does not behave itself rudely. What do people see in you when you respond to a situation. I'm challenging somebody today. Uh, I'm not preaching a fiery message, but I'm preaching from love that the world needs to see at this time that we are children of the Most High God. Because the Lord says, by this, through showing love one to another, they will know that we are, that they are, we are your, his disciples. The world needs a solution and Jesus is that solution. He, he is the incarnate God that demonstrated that love towards us. Uh, 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 and, and understand this, this scripture in First Corinthians. He goes on to say, though we speak with tongues uh, of men and angels and have not love, we're a sounding symbol. Uh, though we have the gift of prophecy, you may have various gifts. Though we understand all mysteries and all knowledge and have all faith, so that we can say to the mountain, "Be thou removed." If we don't have love, we are nothing. I grew up in a, a, a family that we didn't express love to one another. But when I came into the household of God, oh, the love of God shone through the brethren, through God's love towards me, overwhelmed me, had me in tears at the altar every week. I was overwhelmed by God's love. And love is a weapon. It's one of the weapons in your armory that you can use against the enemy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we may have prophesied in his name. We may show different signs. But the, the thing the Lord says is, he, some of you will say, depart from me for I do not know you. Why? You say you love me. But when I was hungry, did you feed me? You say you love me. But when I was thirsty, did you give me something to drink? You say you love me, but as a stranger, did you take me in? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was sick, did you visit me? When I was in prison, did you come and look for me? At this time, there are so many going through loneliness and turmoil, mental um, uh, trauma. We have got to pick up the phone and call somebody, visit somebody, inquire in their health, inquire how they are, demonstrate straight love without expecting anything in return don't let's restrict ourselves to the four walls of the church uh, jesus gave us an example in the, the the parable of the good samaritan the priest and the levite walked past they were busy they looked maybe they thought well he, we do not mix with the samaritans it, it, it's 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 uncalled for it's unheard of but the the, the, the samaritan uh, uh, oh hallelujah the samaritan says look this man is in need he has been robbed uh, 
I will stop. I will show love and mercy. And Jesus said that the question was really asked is, who is my neighbor? And, and, and they said, the one who showed him mercy, who showed him love. Jesus says, go and do likewise. We are commanded to show love practically. Let's show love in action to our family. If we restrange, ask God, to reconcile. Uh, yesterday, I, I saw uh, parts of my family reconciled because I prayed and I said, God, I want to go there. And, I, and what do they see? I want them to see the Jesus in me. And a soft answer, turn away, Rob. Sometimes you don't even say anything. Sometimes it's just your actions that they see. And you can make a difference. Just like the apostles in the early church, they turned the world upside down, not with their shouting, not with their... Uh, 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 contention or, or, or arguing they showed love and they were in the power of the Holy Spirit let me move on to my next point hallelujah my time is running out but the father's love the father's love uh, we know that God has many attributes such as holy righteous He's good, he's merciful, his very nature, his essence is derived from many of the Hebrew names that we can call upon, such as Jehovah Jireh, he's our provider, and we know this. Uh, he is El Shaddai, God Almighty, uh, the all-sufficient God. He is Jehovah Rafi, the one who heals, and we all probably experience the time of healing from our God. This is just describing some of the things that God does for us. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. When we're feeling alone, when we feel that we, there is no one else around, God is there. He said, I'll be with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he is Jehovah Sabbath, the Lord of hosts, the commander of the angelic host. So he fights the battles for us. He is El Gibor, the mighty God. El Elyon, the most high God. And he is Jehovah Makadesh, the Lord who sanctifies us. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is the God of peace. He gives us peace. His peace surpasses all our understanding when our hearts and our minds is stayed on him. He is the I am that I am who spoke to Moses, but he is still the I am of your situation. You see, when God, the Father, when he said, let there be and created earth out of nothing, ex nihilio, he said in Genesis 1.31, it was very good. This blows the, the Gnostics' arguments out of the water because the nature of earth was very good. It's only when Sin entered that there was corruption. There is a book by Cornelius Platinga who says not the way it's supposed to be. The world that we see right now is not the way that God had completely created it when he finished and said it is very good. But I want you to know that God's hallelujah, his omnipotence, he is omnipresence, he is omniscience, he's all seeing, all knowing, all powerful when we consider God's ways uh, when we consider the heavens his works uh, of his fingers uh, the moon and the stars which God has ordained we have to say as the psalmist what is man that thou art mindful of him he is the everlasting God who thought of you before the foundation of the world so Psalms 139 declares I will praise him for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You ought to look in the mirror and say, I am wonderfully made. I am beautiful. Look in the mirror and say, I am God's creation. That's love. When I look in the mirror, I think of God as his image and likeness, and therefore I can praise him. How precious are his thoughts towards you? How great is the sum of them? If we should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When we awake, God is still with you. How many of you, when you woke up, just felt God wake you up and say, good morning. You can say, good morning, Father. What a revelation when we think about how awesome our God is. The love of God that created you and I. That God who is the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, who was and is and is to 
come. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Even where you are right now, if you can think about what God has done for you, you can praise him and say, hallelujah, what an awesome God we serve. Hallelujah. Maybe just take a minute just to say, Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. But we ought to also put this measure. We say we love God. But do we follow his commandments? Do we have idols that step and come in the way of our God? He says no other gods which we should have before him. He declares that we should worship him in spirit and in truth. Have nothing as a distraction. Do we, if we love him, do we pray? Do we meditate? Do we worship? Do we study his word? Do we trust him? Like Job would say, if he slays me, yet will I trust him? Do we have faith in God? Because his word declares that he that comes to me must first believe he is God and a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let me go on to my final point. Jesus' sacrificial love. Jesus demonstrated that through the incarnation. The, the, the announcement, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, gives us hope. He left his place in glory, knowing what he would have to go through. His love and his compassion was seen through his ministry here on earth. We have seen him open blind eyes. We have seen him uh, cause the lame to walk. We have seen him cast out demons. We have seen him, oh hallelujah, do so many miracles. We have seen him raise the dead. John 11, we see Lazarus and look at the description of, of John the apostle, the one whom Jesus loved, who would, who would be on his bosom. He said, uh, describes, he says, Lord, behold, he, he whom you love is sick, is what the disciples were saying. Jesus had a love for humanity despite what he was about to go through. Jesus loved Martha, her sister, and Lazarus. And they said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, when he saw the Jews come in and weeping, he groaned in his spirit. And he was troubled. When we see the injustices in the world, when we see uh, people suffering, we ought to groan in our spirit and be moved with compassion. Jesus says, where have you laid him? Hallelujah. Before he gets to that, we have the shortest verse in the Bible. John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus wept. But those two words demonstrates his compassion, his feeling for humanity, his love. And Jesus has come forth. We know the rest of the story, but we know he was about to go to Calvary. And before he gets there, he is in the garden of Gethsemane. And we know that he groaned in the spirit. He prayed until beads of sweat, sweats of blood poured out, came out from his forehead. He, he agonized and he said, Lord, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Let this situation, let there be another way. But nevertheless, thy will be done. And Jesus suffered rejection. He suffered torment. He, he was beaten. And, and, and Isaiah 53 gives a description uh, of, of what he went through. Uh, uh, but but I, I want you to know that John 1, 4, 10 says, God loved us. He sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for us somebody had to pay the penalty for us for us there was a song that came to my spirit uh, i wish i could swing i wish andrea was there to sing the song but jesus went to calvary to save a wretch like you and me that's love that's love they hung him high and stretched him wide and he hung his head and then he died that's love when you consider that jesus created the heavens and the earth. He was there, that visible and invisible thrones or dominions. He did not have to leave his place of glory and go through the pain and the suffering of being crucified on the cross. And many of you have seen the Mel Gibson movie, The Passion of the 
of the Christ. Uh, and we get a glimpse of, of, of the, the torture he went through and how his, um, his flesh was ripped and he was tormented uh, to the point where he was near death. And then he hung him on a cross or on a tree. Uh, uh, and Jesus still in his love for humanity said, Father, Forgive them for they know not what they do. At that moment, the enemy was about to be defeated. He thought he had Jesus, but Jesus hung on the cross, endured the pain of the cross, and he cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, meaning my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He felt the separation from God's love. What manner of love is this that God would send his only begotten son that none of us who believe would perish, but we should have everlasting life. But he hung high and he went through the cross until he of himself gave up the spirit and declared it is finished. And at that point, I want you to know no matter what you've been through, no matter what the enemy sends against you, uh, the Jesus paid the price. Uh, it is finished. Uh, no more depression. It is finished. Uh, no more, hallelujah, defeat. Uh, Jesus paid the price that you and I may have everlasting life. Uh, it is finished. Uh, so we can declare, hallelujah, you say you love me, but what did Jesus go through? He paid the price. He says, no greater love have you than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. Uh, no matter what you're going through, and my time is up, there is forgiveness. Uh, there is healing. Uh, Jesus paid the price. The love of God was manifested through the incarnation of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And the simple message to the world, for those who do not know Jesus, Jesus saved. There is a better way than what we are going through in this life and in this society and in this world. Jesus saved, hallelujah. God bless you, hallelujah. I, I hand over to you, Pastor Stuart. But before I do, let me just pray and say, Father God, I thank you. Father, I, I pray in the name of Jesus that this word would have touched somebody's heart. It would reignite our love and our flame for you, Lord. It would allow us to move with compassion and with love so that, Father, we may be able to turn this world upside down. I pray for Joy Community Church, Father. Hallelujah. I pray that the love of God will continue to rest, remain, and abide with them, and that your anointing, Father, will be upon your servant, uh, Pastor Stuart, his wife, Andrea, and the whole church, my God. I bless you, O oh Father, for them, and I thank you that we are believers together in Christ, and that we can show forth that we love one another, and the world may know that we are your disciples. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Over to you, Pastor Stuart. 